You're right, but I'm not as confident. He's a sit for me this week. I just look at the Seattle defense. They've been amazing. Only seven touchdowns allowed to the position for the season. They haven't allowed a touchdown to a wide receiver in their last five games. And we've seen Brandon Cook struggle with different quarterbacks, but certainly lately, more so with Terod Taylor. But he hasn't scored. He has one touchdown in his last four games. He's been held to 45 yards or less in three games in a row. And I just don't trust him right now to the same degree that I was trusting him earlier. So I'm going to try and sit him. And I'm going to try and sit Kyle Pitts as well. I know we've been saying that a lot. But the last time these two teams met, the Panthers and the Falcons, Stephon Gilmore said, give me Pitts. And it was bad news. And Kyle Pitts was saying after the game, he did things to me I've never seen. I have to do better. He was just in total awe of facing Stephon Gilmore. Why would you go away from doing that again? Panthers probably going to put Stephon Gilmore on Kyle Pitts. I am starting if David Njoku and Harrison Bryant, we know is out. But if David Njoku is out, I'm starting Austin Hooper over Kyle Pitts this week. That's how little confidence I have in Kyle Pitts right now taking on this defense. Keith, let's take a look at your sits for this week. We'll stay with the Carolina Panthers. Chuba Hubbard, he's starting for Christian McCaffrey, but he shouldn't be starting for fantasy manager? I'm not sure if he'll start for Christian McCaffrey if the first play is a passing play. It might be Amir Abdullah on the field. It's been Amir Abdullah on the field more when Christian McCaffrey was healthy than Chuba Hubbard over the last month. Chuba's great success backing up McCaffrey was when he was in that Mike Davis, you get all the Christian McCaffrey touches role. Once Abdullah was signed, that pretty much stopped and so I would, I'm, a, I'm just really concerned that Abdullah takes the passing downs work, Cam Newton takes the work inside the five-yard line, and you've got a running back who's going to get 15 touches between the 20s who isn't that efficient. All right, so we'll see what happens. He was awesome, though, the last time these two teams met. Abdullah, not as big a part of the team then as he is now. If they're winning, maybe he has a big opportunity. If they're losing, probably not going to be as much. And so we'll see if Chuba Hubbard is starting for a lot of fantasy managers this week. Dave, let's talk about your sits, and one in particular is a guy that we were excited about last week, and that is Jamal Williams, but you're not as excited this week taking on the Broncos. He only played 48% of the snaps. That was extremely disappointing. One target, extremely disappointing, and he had a lot of carries. He just wasn't very efficient with them, and the Lions, you know, happened again. They weren't near the goal line, couldn't punch it in for a touchdown, even if Williams had the chance to. Denver, speaking of rushing touchdowns, hasn't allowed a single one to a running back in five straight games. Kansas City's running backs did get 160 total yards against Denver last week, but I think the Broncos were daring the Chiefs to run the football in this game. I don't think they're going to do that against the Lions. I think they're going to at least play straight-up defense, if not focus a little bit more on the run, and dare Jared Goff to beat them through the air. All right, so you still have him ranked 23rd, though. So he's Low end. Starting. Like, there aren't a lot of running backs I love this week. Deontay okay. Foreman way ahead of him. Okay, so Deontay Foreman over Jamal Williams. Totally get that for sure. All right, there's your starts and sits for Week 14.